Hello everyone and welcome to the channel and here's Google Apps Updates Roundup number 81. In this episode, I'm going to show you more than 30 new features in multiple Google Apps. So without further ado, let's jump in. Let's start with Google Photos and the first change is in Memories. As you know, sometimes Google Photos adds a collage at the end of some memories and now you have the ability to tap on this edit button next to save, which will allow you to edit the collage first before saving by changing the style, drag things over or pinch to zoom like this and then save a copy of this collage to your gallery without impacting the memory itself and you can find it over here. Another change related to memories, now you will see a banner at the top under the memories tab that will allow you to review all the suggested memories waiting for you in the pipeline and here it will show you uh, some of these suggestions Here's the first memory, here's the second memory, and so on and so forth. So it will give you this kind of uh, story-like experience to review and save whatever of the suggested memories in the pipeline. Change number three, when you take a long exposure or an action pan photo in Google camera on a pixel phone and then view it in Google photos, you will see this brand new grid button on the left side. And when you tap on it, it will show you the normal and the long exposure or action pan photo next to it. From here, you can do things like create an animation and it will create this animation by switching between the two photos. Also from here, you can uh, change the main photo like this and you can also keep one and delete the rest or you can export in addition to creating an animation from here as well and this is how it works i'm not sure why google decided to make a separate interface for this but it might give you a bit more options than the normal way Moving to the magic editor and there are a couple of new changes. The first one is related to the interface. When you select anything in the photo, you will get a brand new plus and minus buttons for adding or subtracting from your selection and also this undo button and the erase button is now bigger than before. Not only this, but the magic editor is a bit smarter than before in completing the missing parts, especially when you are dealing with humans. It can now draw the rest of the body or even the branding on the t-shirt. It can draw if you repositioned your subject in the photo. So let me show you what I have in this example. In this scenario, I moved myself towards the top and slightly to the left and you can see that it managed to draw my shoulder, completed the branding on my t-shirt and the missing part of my arm, which is mind blowing. Here's another example and I did pretty much the same thing. This is the original and here's the final result and it looks very convincing. And when it comes to best take, it got a brand new loading animation and here is how it looks. Another thing I noticed in Audio Magic Eraser, now when you apply some edits to the sound and then play it, you have the ability to tap and hold to listen to the original, which is the same thing we can do in photos. I'm not sure if this is brand new or it's already there, but I didn't know about it and I think it's very useful to be able to compare between the two. And lastly, the backup progress page got updated. So for example, if you have a backup in place and then you go to your profile menu and tap the word backup, it will take you to a page where the items are located with an arrow at the end, tapping on it will take you to a full screen view. From here, you can do things like multi-selecting the items, delete or start the backup from here if it's not already started. Or finally, you can access the backup settings by tapping on the ellipses at the top right corner. Next, YouTube Music. And the first change is the redesigned now playing screen. Now it uses a gradient background color instead of the solid one like before. For reference, here's how it looks in the old design. You will see here that the colors are more subtle. Also the bar at the bottom is no longer shaded with a different color, but now the whole page has the same background color. The second change is the redesigned overlay menu when you tap and hold on any song. For comparison, here is the old design. First, we have Play Next, Start Radio, and Share at the top using this new rectangular design, and then the rest of the options come after. When you compare this to the older version, you will see that the card is now shorter and easier to manage with one hand. Google also updated the playback animation. It's now using thinner lines and located at the bottom right corner instead of being centered and thicker. 
and you can see the same thing on your home screen too. Lastly, the gradient colors at the top are now different and brighter than before, plus these options at the top are organized differently. Next, Google Messages. And we got plenty of new changes, so let's open one of the conversations. You will notice here at the bottom, everything looks different. The text box is now using more rounded corners. The send slash voice message button is now separated in its own circular container. And all the options are now showing inside the text box along with the emoji button on the other side. And when you tap on it, it will change into a two line design. The first one is the text box itself. And it will first tell you what type of message you are trying to send now. Is it a normal text or RCS, which will make it more obvious than this banner with a small text. And when you start typing, this is how it looks. It will be completely separated from the rest of the options at the bottom. The second change is in the emoji page. And now the GIFs and the stickers have their own categories organized in a grid view like this. And when you go to stickers, you will see even more tabs at the bottom that can give you access to all packs, favorites, or recents. I also got the help me write feature that you can see its icon in the text box. So let's take a look at how it works. All you need to do is to write a small part of what you wanna say, and it will give you different iterations for your reply. And you can do this by tapping on the button. It will take a look at whatever you have wrote here and give you different iterations based on different categories at the top. Uh, the first one is called Remix. Then you have something like Shakespeare. Then we have Excited, Formal. These are the options. Chill, Lyrical, and finally Short. I played with it behind the camera and I found it to be fun and useful, so you can give it a try. The other buttons like the Photo and Plus buttons do exactly the same thing, but they have different icons, same as the Send button looks slightly different. I also found the animations to be more bouncy when I expand or collapse the keyboard, uh, same as tapping on the text box, scrolling up, as you see here, they are more bouncy and playful, which is a nice touch. And lastly, the camera shortcut at the top opens an instance from Gcam, which will allow you to do things like activating the timer, turning on the flashlight, choose whatever lens you want, and also adjust the exposure and white balance. Next, Google Chrome. And the first change is the redesigned home page. Here's the older version side by side. The first change is the bigger search bar. And then we have a carousel with the most recent visited websites and instead of having two lines of items. And here you can see 12 different websites while here you can only see eight. There's a new section called your last tap, which will show the last one you visited. And when you tap on it, it will take you right away to this page. The second change is the redesigned bookmarks page. Here's the older version. Now we are getting much bigger icons, more spacing between the items in the list. The search button at the top has been replaced with a search bar. And you can also sort your bookmarks using this button. You have a lot of options here to choose from, plus the ability to change the view. There is now a new option called compact view. This is how it looks. Or you can change it to the visual view, which will give you more or bigger icons and more space between the items. When you go inside the folders, you will see some differences here at the top. Now you can create a folder right away from your phone using this button. And when you select things, the icons used at the top are also different. Next, Google Assistant. And now you have the ability to use the quick phrases feature of Pixel phones with the Pixel Buds Pro if you have one. To achieve this, you need to go to your Google Assistant settings and scroll down until you find quick phrases. And here you will see that the incoming calls can now be answered using your Pixel Buds Pro in this new message, which means if your hands are not clean or engaged in something, you can answer your phone calls with a simple word if you are wearing the headphones, which is a nice feature. The second change is under your Google Assistant settings and then general. Here you will find a new menu item at the bottom called notifications. From here, you can adjust all the notifications Google Assistant can send you. You have three items at first, but you can expand all of them by tapping on this button. You can modify things like your reminders and tasks, timers from connected devices, the feedback requests, the tips and tricks, and the list goes on. And the last change is also under Assistant settings. There is a new item here called Help Improve How Assistant Activates. When you go inside, 
you will see that it says save audio, transcripts, and images so the assistance activation technologies can improve over time. And then it says at the bottom that this data will stay on your device, it doesn't leave it. And you can also see all the devices with this feature activated showing here at the bottom if you are signed in with the same account on all of them. Next, Google Lens. And in episode 79, I showed you that now it uses only three taps instead of five or six like before. And what's new this time is the borders around each tap name and also the highlight design is different than before. And when you snap a photo to search, you will immediately see the add to your search bar at the bottom. Tapping on it will allow you to put your own words to modify the results or you can rely on the suggestions which is something new I've never seen before. These suggestions are based on the photo. So for example, when I choose charger and then tap on it again, it will modify the suggestions even further to match my new choice. It says here charger price. So I can reach the results I'm looking for much easier with these suggestions. Google app itself also got a couple of new changes related to the built-in weather app. The first one is the ability to add a home screen shortcut, which will make it easier for you to access it from anywhere. Plus, Google decided to push the redesigned weather app to non-pixel devices. So here I have the S23 Ultra and when I open the weather, I'm getting the same exact design. Next, the Fitbit app. And the first change is the ability to see your Pixel Watch battery percentage at the top left corner. Tapping on it will take you to another page where you can see your devices. When you tap on the Pixel Watch, you can start a manual sync. You can open the Pixel Watch app. You can set your move reminders schedule from here. Choose your main goal and activate or deactivate the heart rate notifications. You have the high and low. Then the ability to disconnect your Pixel Watch. When, if you have a phone already connected, you can start a manual sync as well or disconnect the device from here. Then you can add more devices or shop for Fitbit products. Also, the app itself got a complete revamp. Now everything is bigger. There is more spacing between items, which makes it easier to read. Uh, then you can modify your today page to your liking. Here you have some different presets based on your focus. If you want to sleep better, uh, manage weight, uh, manage stress, improve uh, health or heart health, uh, or you can set your focus yourself if you want. But when you choose a different preset, it will make the information you are interested in front and center. Tapping on any of the items will take you right away to the stats. You can also modify the order of the information showing on your today's page. You can turn things on or off, and that makes it much uh, more customizable when compared to the previous version. Now let's talk about the Pixel Watch. The first change is related to the wallet app and now you can see your loyalty cards right away on the watch without doing anything. And when you tap on any of them, it will brighten up the display and show the QR code for scanning. When you scroll down, you will see more information. You can open the same card on the phone from this shortcut or you can delete the pass from here. Also keep in mind that the order of your loyalty cards match the order on your phone. So if you want to change it here, you need to change it on your phone first. I also found that the uh, cards and passes I added using a screenshot or the camera don't show on the Pixel Watch. And also Google says that the COVID cards, health insurance cards, and other private passes will not appear on your Pixel Watch. And secondly, the personal safety app added two new tiles to the Pixel Watch, emergency sharing and safety check to quickly start the action from your wrist. Now let me show you some random tweaks across multiple apps, starting with Google Contacts. If you have the Gmail account added to your contact information, now you have the ability to start a location sharing directly from the contact page. And here is how it works. You tap on continue. It will take you right away to Google Maps and you can start sharing from here after modifying your settings. Next, keep notes. And when you open it on the web, now you have the ability to download the previous versions of your note. So for example, when I open this one and then tap on the ellipses, I have an option called view history. Tapping on it will show me a long list of different versions of the same note. I can download any of them in a text format and this is how it looks. Next, the recorder app. And now you have the ability to transcribe your recordings in more languages that are not natively supported by the app. 
but this requires uploading the recording to Google servers and Google will transcribe the recording and then download it to your phone. And for you to achieve this, you need to open the recording first, then tap on the ellipses, transcribe again, and here you will find all the extra languages that you can choose from. For example, I have a Turkish sample, which is not natively supported by the app. So I'm gonna choose it from the list, then tap on transcribe. What it will do, it will create a copy of my recording, upload it to the server, and then I'm gonna wait just a few seconds until the transcription finishes. So let me show you how it works. So now the copying started and immediately started to download the file to my phone. I have two copies now. Here's the one with the transcript. This is how it looks. And this is the original one. And finally, Google decided to create a diagnostics app for Pixel phones, which will allow you to test everything related to the phone from the touch sensitivity, the display, the camera, the light sensor, and so on. And this will make it much easier for you when you purchase a secondhand Pixel phone. You can do all your diagnostics before paying for the used phone. And for you to access this new app, all you need to do is to type in the dialer star hash star star hash and then 7287 and then hash star hash star. And it will brighten up the display all the way and there is no way to control this behavior. So I'm gonna adjust my camera. The first thing you need to do to do is to tap on confirm and then it will show you all the things like the visual group and here you can do physical damage display defects uh, back glass defects camera defects here you have the sensors the connectivity the camera the audio the screen uh, others and other defects as well you can start everything at once by tapping on start test and it will take you through each one or you can do individual uh, tests. So it says here, cover the sensor with an uh, area with your hand for two seconds. And it says here, passed. You can also check the uh, accelerometer. It's passed. Uh, you have things like the touch panel. And here it will uh, give you the option to touch every part of the screen to make sure it's responding. And once you finish, the whole area it will take you outside of the test but at any time you can simply swipe up close it and you are good to go so that's pretty much it for today those are all the new changes i wanted to show you please let me know in the comments if you spotted any new feature in google apps to include in my future episodes but for now thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video